Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to a look ahead to this weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix, the first of three races in three weeks to round up the 2020 season. Now this is actually a race I tend to look forward to because we usually do see some pretty decent racing around Sakir and it's been a long time since I can remember seeing a properly bad race there. And do you know what? Last year was no exception. What a race that was. So much happened right from start to finish. I've got to give you a recap of it because the last time we were in Bahrain was March 2019, so it feels like forever ago. But it was an all-Ferrari front row with Sebastian Vettel taking the lead from pole sitter Charles Leclerc by turn one. How things have changed, by the way, with Leclerc also losing out to Valtteri Bottas on the first lap. However, Leclerc did manage to get back past the fin at turn one just a lap later with Bottas then losing out to his teammate Lewis Hamilton. And at the start of lap six, Leclerc overtook his teammate to retake the lead and it was all looking rather good for him. More on that in just a second. Elsewhere, Lance Stroll made contact with Roman Grosjean through the opening couple of corners, putting the Frenchman off track. Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen came to blows on lap four at turn four with Sainz picking up damage. And Antonio Giovinazzi pitched Daniel Kvyat into a spin on lap 12. Following the pit stops, Vettel and Hamilton went wheel to wheel with the Brit moving ahead of the Ferrari. However, Vettel lost control of his car and ended up in a spin and later that lap, lost his front wing in, I think it's fair to say, spectacular fashion on his way back to the pits for some new tyres. Back at the front and Charles Leclerc, who was looking so good for his first ever win, said over Team Radio that there was something wrong with his engine and it was absolute heartbreak for the youngster as the Ferrari began to slow. With his pace falling away, it was kind of inevitable really, but Leclerc was a sitting duck and was soon passed by Hamilton and just a few laps later found himself behind the second Mercedes of Bottas. The big question though, and I remember doing the watch along for this, was could he hang on to P3 and take that first ever podium? It was looking tricky because Verstappen was closing him down very quickly, but on lap 54, Nico Hülkenberg pulled over with a power unit issue and just seconds later, his teammate Daniel Ricciardo also stopped with a loss of power. That brought out the safety car for the final few laps with the race finishing under caution, which allowed Lewis Hamilton to cruise unchallenged across the line to lead home a Mercedes 1-2, with Charles Leclerc clinging on to his first career podium ahead of Max Verstappen. Leclerc did take the point for fastest lap though, but that was very little consolation. It was such a good drive from Charles. But that's just the nature of Formula 1, isn't it? These things happen and later on in the year, he did of course go on to win a few races. Once again though, another cracker in Bahrain. Should we have a look at some track stats then? And a lap of the Bahrain International Circuit is 5.412 kilometres long. That is just over 3.3 miles if you would prefer. And consists of 15 corners. That's six to the left and nine to the right. And the race on Sunday will be run over 57 laps. Once again, there will be three DRS zones in use. The first will run between turns three and four. The second between turns 10 and 11. And the final one down that long start finish straight, which will probably be fairly OP. And if you're wondering, the lap record is a 131.447 and was set all the way back in 2005 by Pedro de la Rosa. There's a blast from the past for you. But the record for the fastest ever F1 lap of the circuit is held by Charles Leclerc, who set a time of a 127.866 on his way to pole position last year. Since it debuted on the calendar back in 2004, the Bahrain Grand Prix has been held 15 times with a total of seven different drivers taking victory over the years. The first being Michael Schumacher, and the most recent, as already covered, was Lewis Hamilton. And Sebastian Vettel actually holds a record for the most wins at the track with four. Ten different drivers have taken pole position at the track, with Vettel also taking the most of those with three. And the pole sitter has gone on to win the race six times, with the winner coming from the front row a total of ten times. And finally for these stats, the lowest grid slot to go on to win the race is P4, and that happened twice with Fernando Alonso in 2006 and Jensen Button in 2009. As always, a massive thank you to Lights Out Blog for providing some of the stats for this preview. And if, like me, you love a good stat, you can check out their website by following the link down in the description. It only gets more exciting from here. Let's talk about tyres and the compounds available for this weekend are the hard C2, the medium C3 and the soft C4. Strategy will be important as always, but overtaking is absolutely possible. And so it won't necessarily just come down to the pit stops. And with those three DRS zones as well, there are plenty of opportunities to get some moves done, especially into turn one. And with another detection point arriving just before that first corner, the overtaken driver has the chance to fight back on the run to turn four. I really do love the way the DRS zones are laid out in Bahrain. Just on that strategy though, teams will probably look at a one stop and Mercedes say the total pit lane lost time without making a stop is around 18.9 seconds. So throw a clean stop in there and drivers will be looking at a total loss of around 21 seconds. So teams will inevitably 
And you'd probably say, well, yeah, obviously, Sean, be looking to make as few stops as possible. But as you'd expect, it will be hot on Sunday, so there will likely have to be some tyre management. Last year, most of the field went for two stoppers. But this year, the compounds selected are a step softer than last year. Therefore, whilst the teams may well want to make a one-stopper work, maybe a medium to hard strategy for a team like Mercedes, for example, it's not going to be easy to do it. Now, usually I'd say something massively sarcastic about the weather at this point, but despite its location, there is actually a very slim chance of rain falling out the circuit over the weekend, or at least that's the case at time of recording. However, the chances of us getting any kind of downpour are actually becoming slimmer as each day passes. So it's looking like we can probably expect a dry race, but just don't rule anything out. If you're looking for something to mix the race up a little bit, you could probably look more towards a safety car than the Skies, but it's not really made that many appearances over the years, to be fair. Since the race debuted on the calendar, the safety car has been called out just four times, but it has never appeared more than once at a single event. The thing is, though, as already mentioned a couple of times now, we do tend to see some decent racing without rain or safety cars cropping up. Okay, then, time for some predictions, and I'm going to do something a little bit different here. To be honest, there is little to no point in predicting the top three as unless we see chaos, which we can't really predict, it's likely to be the usual mix of Hamilton, Bottas and Verstappen. However, behind that, it is so close and there is nothing between most of the teams involved. And as discussed in a video earlier this week, that's where the real battle is between now and the end of the year in terms of championship positions. Racing point heading to this weekend off the back of a pole position for Lance Stroll, a second place finish in the race for Sergio Perez. What a race that was, by the way, and a five point lead over McLaren in the fight for third. So I think it's a reasonable assumption to say that they're going to be brimming with confidence this weekend. They have also been in excellent, consistent form of late as well. I'm not expecting to see them take pole position this weekend and a podium will probably require something to happen ahead of them but I am expecting them to be the leader of that midfield pack this weekend. It's just a track I expect to suit the car, and with tyre management likely to be a thing as well, I'm going to say that Sergio Perez will win that battle this weekend. We know how good he is on tyres, and I'm even going to go as far as to say P4 for the Mexican on Sunday ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Renault should, I think, be fairly pacey this weekend too, so they will be in the mix. And if you are wondering, I reckon Alex Albon will make the top six. As I said the other day, it's a massive final three races of the season for him. I'm not totally writing McLaren off and I think they will pick up some points, but I expect Alpha Tauri to bounce back strongly in Bahrain after a difficult weekend in Turkey and I think with Racing Point and Renault perhaps having the edge on raw pace, McLaren is probably looking at tail end points, but given how tight it is in that midfield, every single point really does matter. As for Ferrari, yeah they had a great result in Turkey, but I think they will struggle a bit more this time out. We already know the car is down on power. And with a few long straights and DRS zones, they might end up picking up very few points, if any at all. That said, Charles Leclerc has been so good at extracting the absolute maximum from that car this year. So you can't totally rule them out. It's all guesswork, of course, but it's just a bit of fun and it's something you can all look back at next week and give me a load of grief about. Really though, let's just sit back and enjoy what could be a great weekend of racing and hopefully an epic final three races of 2020. And if you are interested, I've already sort of mentioned it, but I'll pop a link on screen now to the video I did earlier this week on five things that I've picked out that are still up for grabs this season. What do you guys think, though? You can let me know your predictions ahead of this weekend down in the comments section. So who do you think will win the race on Sunday? And which team or driver do you reckon will end up winning that midfield fight this weekend? That is it for this video then, but I will be back across the weekend with more content as always. But in the meantime, don't forget that you can of course follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean, this has been the F1 Word and until next time, goodbye.